Hi guys and welcome back to this part two. So I've just left off on OSPF challenge part one where we're going to continue now. So we configured just before we left off we configured basically R1 and R2 to communicate with one another. What we're now going to do guys is we're going to basically configure R3, router 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in here I'm going to go to R3 and I'm going to basically go enable conf t and I'm going to basically say First thing I'm going to say is OS router, OSPF, and again, I'm going to use that same process ID of 10. Again, remember that's why I'm using 10 is because the exercise asked me to use this. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say router ID, and because this is router 3, I'm going to use 3.3.3.3. And then what I'm going to need to do, guys, is I'm going to need to now do my network statements. So I'm going to say do show IP interface brief to make sure that I can see all of my interfaces are up and working and I can see them all nicely there. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say network and I'm going to use this statement here 192.168.1. So where's that network? So I can see this is the network here on looks like my, um, my Ethernet network, my LAN, and I can see it's a slash 24. So I'm going to say 192.168.1.0. I'm going to use my wildcard bits of 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 I'm going to say area 0. And then once that's done, that's my first um, basically network statement. I'm then going to use another network statement. So again, this is going to be my serial interface next. So I'm going to say 192.168.10. And in this case, I can see this is the 6 interface. So again, this is this network here. Again, guys, remember, I may not show this. Again, this, is, this exercise is being very, very kind to us, showing us the network addresses. Now, again, this might not be here, but we'd be able to work this out but based on this interface address. So again, how would I work this out? Remember, this is a slash 30, which is 252, an increment of four. So again, remember, the, the, the network address isn't going to be 192.168.10.0. In this case, it's 10.4. So again, it's the next address or the next network because it's a slash 30 what's my wildcard going to be it's going to be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 and then i'm going to say area zero and then what i'm going to need to do finally guys is i'm going to need to do my last network statement and again remember if i had more interfaces on this router what would i need to do i would need to add more network statements so again i'm going to add 192.168. dot and in this case it's going to be 10 dot, you can see this interface is 10.10. .10. So I'm going to say 10. Now again, remember, the last network was 10.4. This interface is 10.10. .10, so my next network statement is going to be 10.8. 0.0.0.3. .0 .0 Don't do too many zeros. Area 0. And once I've done that, guys, I've now added all of my network statements. So at this point, guys, I can see my score is up to 90 out of 100. So I'm very pleased we're up into um, the very high marks here. However, what's going wrong? Why haven't I not got 100%? Because to my mind, all of the PCs should be able to communicate with one another. So let's verify this is the case. So let's do a couple of ping requests. So I'll go back to real time mode and let's do a couple of ping requests. Now again, just remember the first one or possibly two may fail. Okay, so again, now in this case, it looks like it's it's been successful. But again, let's just double check that that's the case. No, hold on, hold on. The, the, the successful one was before. Let's keep trying just for a moment, guys, because again, I've got, looks like I've got a failed. Now I've got a success, okay? Just be careful there because, and what I usually do, I, li I like to do, guys, is I like to clear. Anytime I'm doing new tests, I always like to delete all the other ones so it's, so it's very, very easy to see. So can I ping now between PC1 and PC2? I'm successful. Can I ping between, for example, PC3 and PC2? Now again, it might need to arc here. But again, in this case, because it's, it's, we've been doing some pings, it's learned the MAC address information, so I can see it's successful. So again, I could test between all of these guys and we should see that it's successful. Now, here's the thing, guys. At this point in time, I've got success. I can ping between each of my different sites, from PC1 to PC3, PC3 to PC2, and so on. But the exercise wanted us to do something different. It basically said that it wanted us to change the the basically how the traffic flew, uh, flowed through the network. So if I go to simulation for a moment, guys, delete this, and let's just walk through. Let's just see how PC1 communicates with PC2. It chooses the least cost path to get to here. So it goes from R1 to R2 over to PC2. 
It doesn't go between OR1 to OR3 to OR2 and then over to PC2. Why not? Because that's deemed as a higher cost. So if we press play here, we can see it goes over to OR2, goes to PC2, and then it's going to come back from OR2 down to OR1 over to PC1. Why is it choosing this route? Because this is the lowest cost. This is the, the metric. This is the, the best path to get from one from one network to another in this case. It has the lowest cost. How can I prove this? Well, if I do my show IP route, what can I see? I can see that it knows about this 172.16.2 network. There it is there, guys. And you can see it's got a cost of 65. Now, again, if, for example, this link went down, what would happen is it would adjust. It would basically send the traffic over this link to OR3 up to OR2 and then over to PC2. So that's that's fantastic. This is the this is the benefits of using a dynamic routing protocol. But what if I wanted to change it? This um, flow of traffic. The network administrators asked me to do this. So there's numerous different ways to do this. But to manually adjust the cost, we can do this, guys. What we can do is we could go in here and we could adjust the cost of this link, this outward interface of serial 001, and we could adjust the outward interface of router 3's serial 001. Why? Because at the moment, this is a value of 64, this is a value of 64, and this is a value of 1. So again, the, the, the value of going across these links over to this will be 64 plus 64 plus 1, which would be 129. That's higher than 65, and that's the reason why it chooses this particular route as the best route. It's got a lower cost than going around this link. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to change the, the value of this, the cost of this link. So that will allow us to route around this longer path in this case. But again, that's what the, the exercise is asking us to do. So what I'm gonna do then, guys, is I'm gonna go into R1, I'm gonna go conf T, I'm gonna go into my, um, I'm gonna go into interface serial, zero slash zero slash one, and then what I'm gonna need to do is, I'm gonna need to use my command of, now what's the command? That's the next thing, guys. The command is IP OSPF cost, and then what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna put the cost. Now, again, it gives us some information. Change the cost of each outward serial interface to a value of 10 on each router. That's your traffic going between PC1 and PC2. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna change the cost of this to 10. Now, before I do that, guys, I just wanna show you something. If I do a statement, do show IP interface, OSPF um, serial zero slash zero slash one. Let me just see if I can get this command. Um, show IP, show IP OSPF. Let's just get this command right. Interface. Okay, so what I wanted to show you before I run this command, guys, I've just used this because I'm in um, an interface, I need to use the do command. But here you can see I'm using the show IP OSPF interface serial zero zero one. Notice here, guys, look at the cost of the link at the moment. The cost is 64. Now, in a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to the value that it's saying here, 10. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to hit the up arrow. So I'm going to just go back under here. I'm going to go IP, OSPF, I'm going to make sure cost, and I'm going to say 10. Now, I should see my score going upwards here, guys. And I can see it's gone up a small bit, two marks, but again, it's increased. So again, if I ran that command again, let's use that command, notice what's happened, guys. Look at this. The cost has changed to 10. Now, if I communicate still, guys, between PC1 and PC2, it still won't take this route. Because why? Because I've now changed this to 10. This is still 64, and this is still 1. So again, 10 plus 64 is 74, plus 1 is 75. Is 75 better than 65? No, it's not. So what I need to do is I need to go over to my friend router 3, and I need to change this. So I'm going to go into interface. I'm going to go N for a moment. I'm going to go conf T. I'm going to go interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. And I'm going to say IP OSPF cost, and again, 10. Now, once I've done this, guys, this will change this link cost to 10. So if I now think about it, it's 10 and 10 and 1. What's that? That's 21. Is 21 a better cost than 65? Well, the answer to that question is absolutely it is. So let's see if now router 1 takes that into consideration. 
So when I drop back, I'm gonna say show IP root, let's have a look at the, the connection. So at this moment in time, oh, let's give it a second, guys. Maybe this hasn't been, it hasn't uh, gone through the, the, the stages yet. But at the moment, see here, guys, at the moment, it's still seeing a value of 65 here. Okay, it's still seeing a value of 65. Let's give that a second or two. Let's just, I wanna just go back to make sure. See the way we're in simulation mode at the moment, guys? I wanna make sure I go back into real-time mode just to allow all of those OSPF messages to go around because what's happening now is there's a, basically a flooding process that's happening. Each of these routers are communicating their new LSA um, costs to the other routers to kind of say, oh, you know the way I was telling you before, this was 64, actually it's changed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back into router one. I'm gonna now go show IP route. Before, remember guys, look, before the OSPF, the cost was 65 to get to this two network. What's it gonna be now, guys? Well, hopefully, now that I've given it a bit of time, it should improve. Look at that, guys. We can see the cost of this now is 21. Why is it going through this route? So notice it's gonna be going through this route, through R3, through R2, then to PC2. How can I prove this? Let's go back, guys. Again, let's do a test. Let's delete this old test. Let's go in, connect. PC1 to PC2, let's run through this, off we go. Now it's gonna go across this link, up to router three. Now, what I wanna show you guys is, that looks, everything looks great here, but I still don't have my full 100%. Why is that? Because look at the, the very end of this. It says, in addition, ensure that the paths, the packets route back from PC2 to PC1 over the longer path. As packets travel back from more PC2, change to each word outwards serial interface to a value of 20. So at this moment in time, guys, what does OR2 see as the best path to get back to PC1? Well, it still sees this router 64 and 165 being the better cost. Because remember, I never touched this interface, this outward cost of this interface. This is still a value of 64, and this is still a value of 64. This interface here, serial 000 on, on router three. So again, it's gonna use the shorter path to get back. So again, so at this moment in time, what I need to do, guys, is I want PC2 to basically, or two in particular, I wanted not to, to, to route it back this link, I wanted to go over the longer path. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to adjust the outward serial interfaces. How can I do that? I'm gonna jump into R2. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go conf T. I'm gonna go into interface serial zero slash zero slash one. And I'm gonna say IP OSPF cost. And in this case, it's saying put in a cost of 20. So once I press enter, I can see my, my score has ticked up a little bit more. Finally, guys, last one I need to do is I need to basically change the interface value here. So I'm gonna say exit, I'm gonna go interface serial, zero slash zero slash zero. And what I'm gonna say is IP OSPF cost 20. Once I do that, guys, I can see, hip hip hooray, we've got 100%, okay? But most importantly, guys, we understand what we've done here. So now what's gonna happen is when I do my ping test, it's gonna go over the longer path here to PC2, and when it comes back, it's gonna go the longer path. Why is it doing that? Remember, we've manually adjusted the cost of these links to route it differently. In this case, so if I close this, and let's do delete this one, let's see our packets traverse across the network. So if I go step through it, it goes across from R1, over to R3, up to R2. Now this time, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna put this next top in as its next top. It's going to basically route it across over to R3, back to R1, back to PC1, where I've got a successful ping. So guys, that's the end of this OSPF challenge. You can see there, we've successfully completed that. What have we done? We've configured basically our router ID for OSPF. We've then configured a number of different network statements in order for OSPF to put them into the OSPF routing process and for our routers to learn about these different networks. And then what we've seen, guys, is we've seen how this Deutsch's algorithm, this basically each algorithm, each router is basically looking up to see what's the best route or the best way to get to the destination network. And again, what, I've, what we've done is we've adjusted so manually, it has to be said, and there's many different ways to do this, guys. We've adjusted manually number of different outward-based interfaces to basically change the cost 
of these basically links so that it changes the flow of our traffic. Okay guys, that's the end of our configuration and um, our practice challenge. Um, thanks for joining me and speak to you soon. Thank you.